It's time for Voice of Indy. Your hosts today are Beam Weeks, author, producer, and marketing monster for independent multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group, and Stephen Jeeves, author, producer, composer, and publisher for Fresh Ink Group. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another Wednesday evening and uh, another episode of the Voice of Indie Podcast. This is episode number 105. I'm your host, Beam Weeks, and with me is Mr. Stephen G. How are you doing tonight, Stephen? Well, I'm doing fair to middling. As you know, I fell eight days ago, and after eight days, I'm still hurting like crazy, and, and my left arm's not getting any better, so... Last week, I uh, accidentally squawked during the show. If you hear me squawk again this week, just shake your head and think, damn, that guy's getting old or something. (laughs) Uh, But other than that, still uh, hanging with my frogs every night. (laughs) It's funny. When it rains like crazy, two or three of them say, well, we got to go meet our girlfriends, and they disappear for a day and come back from the lake (laughs) the next day. And, uh, you know, we just go again. So I I got four regulars and a floater. And I know them all. I don't name them. I do not name frogs, please. You know, I've had a few people ask me their names, but no. But not, uh, no, 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 Dave, no Chuck, no, no Bill. No, no, uh, no. But uh, but at any rate, uh, everything seems to be going well. We're going crazy, putting out books, making videos, working on audio books, getting marketing out there, and uh, acting like we know what we're doing. And how are you doing? I'm doing well, and I uh, just want to let everybody know. The Voice of Indie Podcast is a brand new blog. So yeah. you can go check out the Voice of Indie Podcast dot WordPress dot com. That's Voice of Indie Podcast dot WordPress dot com. And you know, it's I'm just getting it set up so there's not a whole lot over there, but what I intend to do is each week put the uh put the bio of each week's guest over there, the placard, the link to the show, link to their uh uh, various social media stuff, and uh, it's, it, it's the same kind of stuff you'll see in the uh, newsletter as well, but the newsletter, of course, has a lot more uh, content, so uh, yeah, so go over there and check that out, voiceofindiepodcast.wordpress.com, and uh, if you want to be part of tonight's show, we've already got a couple of callers lined up, so if you want to be part of tonight's show, and uh, if you have a question or a comment for tonight's guest, here's how you can participate. Call 516-453-9902 right now with your questions or comments for tonight's guest. Or post a note on Twitter with hashtag Fresh Ink Group in the body of the tweet and we'll read it on air. That's 516-453-9902 or hashtag Fresh Ink Group on Twitter. Yeah. 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 So, those of you who read the newsletter, and we have a fairly good number, and we get a very good percentage of uh, opens and, and stuff like that, too, so I, we know people are reading it. But uh, you'd see in today's newsletter that Robert G. Willis Cross book, The uh, the Daedalus Files, which is a collection of the four Daedalus shorter books, all in one uh, anthology. wouldn't be an anthology. It would be a compendium. What, what's the word? I'll think about that a little bit. But at any rate, uh, that thing's been rocking and rolling, even though it's been out for a couple of years. You'll see that it listed its number 34 in hard science fiction in the Kindle store. That's out of hundreds of thousands in hard wow. science fiction. And, Congratulations uh, uh, to Robert. And as of today, it's still holding at number 35 and number 49 in the 90-minute science fiction and fantasy short reads. So top 50. Congratulations, Dr. Willis Croft. Uh, the Daedalus Files is flying high. All right. So here's some cool news. Last week's show with Caleb Pirtle III is becoming one of our most popular episodes in the archive. Uh, Ooh. The number of listens is rising faster than usual. It was like I went over there and it's like, oh, whoa. Okay, cool. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a reminder that the archive keeps each guest's interview front and center for many, many years to come. So uh, when you're on this show uh, and the night of your uh, your live episode is over, it's in the archive, promote the heck out of it. And, uh, you know, this is something five years down the road, somebody can tune back in and listen to it. So Yeah, and if you've got an episode in there... And, you know, there's a lot of advantages to you sending traffic there, too, including the fact that Google recognizes that traffic and then moves that up in the rankings. So when people are are interested in you as an author and they Google your name, uh, it'll appear on the first page of the results. And you really like having, you know, an hour-long interview out there for people to get to know you. That's a good marketing thing. So take advantage of it. We're We're putting a lot of time, effort, and money 
into making these things work for everybody. So we appreciate it when people also make it work for themselves, too. Indeed. Now, uh, Stephen uh, mentioned the newsletter, uh, and I briefly mentioned it when talking about the new um, blog. But uh, this newsletter is packed with all kinds of great information. It, it gives you a pretty good uh, knowledge of who is going to be each week, but also it lets you know some of these new books that are coming out and just what's going on in the world of publishing. And we also uh, talk a lot about share uh, episodes of uh, um, the Carter's blog blog that comes on before this one. So uh, if you want to uh, subscribe to our letter, and I suggest you do, <laughs> no hint of threat, uh, here's how you can do that. Stay on top of these podcasts and all things Fresh Ink Group with our weekly digital newsletter. New releases, videos, stories, excerpts, interviews, and more. Sign up now on the homepage of FreshInkGroup.com and be the one who knows what's what. What, 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 what? Now get over there and sign up. Sign up, darn it. Sign up. Yeah, we we get excited. Uh, We go over to YouTube and see people have subscribed to the Fresh Ink Group channel. Unless we've like fallen in the last eight days and hurt, we get up and dance, dance a little jig. We're just thrilled about that kind of stuff. Well, maybe that's if how you, you fell. Yeah, you were if, dancing. if we've fallen in the last eight days, we just kind of wiggle around in our seat and act excited. But mm-hmm. at any rate, yeah, uh, get out there and, and help support those things. Now, each week in the show, we've been uh, telling the top five print bestsellers from Fresh Ink Group published books in the past week. When we made this rundown two days ago, I pasted in the current numbers, and I'm looking at them now and seeing that there has been one shift. So I'm going to tell you what it was two days ago and then tell you how it's shifted. Two days ago, uh, on a 30-day cumulative, cumulative print sales, this is worldwide sales, all print editions, Maximizing Happiness Through Intimate Communication, third edition by Dr. Marshall L. Shearer and Dr. Marguerite R. Shearer, his widow, uh, is our number one print bestseller. This is five weeks in a row this has happened now, and we are still confused by it, but we are happy, and we are either getting up and dancing jigs or wiggling in our seats, depending on whether we've fallen lately. But Maximizing Happiness Through Intimate Communication, it's an excellent book. Dr. Shearer was a friend of mine all the way back to my University of Michigan days. He was a guest lecturer who I invited in to come in and teach a couple of sessions in a class that I was teaching, a 400-level psych class, 700-level social work class. And the guy became my hero. I mean, he, he's just, uh, I, I was just thrilled to have him. And, and he was very famous at the time, too. Had a, had a national column with his wife and, and a bunch of other things going on and stuff. Um, and then we became friends. So um, he's he passed away uh, seven, eight years ago, something like that. But we're proud to have his books in our collection. And it's not just this relationship books. We've got others, too, including Toward Interfaith Harmony. Yeah which is the last book he wrote about, uh, you know, religion, world religion, and how we can find common ground and stuff like that. And that's an excellent book, too. So Maximizing Happiness Through Intimate Communication, great book to help you improve your relationships. Number two spot, Sammy, Hero at Age Five by Mary Schmidt, and the companion book to that, When Angels Fly. Both of them are about losing her son to, to uh, brain cancer. And uh, the Sammy Hero at age five is more of a memoir focused on Sammy and his life and what they went through and lots of nice pictures and stuff like that. The Wind Angels Fly focuses a little bit more on the whole medical journey and some serious concerns that Mary had about how her son's treatment was handled and whatnot. So those are both excellent books. And they're in our two, two and three slot this week uh, or were two days ago. In the fourth and fifth slot, same book, The High Road, Memories from a Long Trip, soft cover, and then The High Road, Memories from a Long Trip, hard cover by Mark Herndon, Country Music Hall of Fame drummer, former member of Alabama, played with Alabama for almost three decades. If you're an Alabama fan, you've been a Mark Herndon fan, whether you knew it or not. And if you haven't read his book and read about all those years playing with Alabama, touring, being on the road. Mark was the pilot of their tour plane, and he had some adventures to tell about that, not to mention tons of pictures, stories, uh, you know, me hanging out with Charlie Daniels, people like that. It's a fun, fun book. That's what was happening two days ago. Now, as of right now, this very second, the uh, soft cover of The High Road has dropped off the list, because it got put, they all got pushed down by a new number one bestseller in print for this week, 
Still Not Enough, Minority Millennials in the Workplace by oh, Janelle God. A. Jordan, who was a guest on the show just, just a couple of weeks ago. Go, Janelle. Um, it's an excellent book. It, you know, it's a, it's a look at uh, issues around employment and minorities and what's happening with new generation. And it's just a, it's just a very cool book. Um, so get over there and check that out. Congratulations, Janelle A. Jordan. Your book is our number one bestseller in print this week. All right. Fantastic. Uh, I just want to throw this out here. Uh, Kenneth Lindquist, he's one of our authors at Freshing Group. Uh, we have finished his website. It's up and running, howtoteachdriving.com. How to driving.com and he's got a blog as well and that's embedded in the website so you can just go to the website and then you can check out his blog as well so how to teach driving.com and there are a few uh comments here on twitter that are lining up uh robert willis cross says jill and i are here and jerry pay told me he would be listening from northern florida so you got Welcome, that jerry all right uh and then Joe Conjol, he says, good evening, everyone. Looking forward to hearing Patrick talk about his book. He's an interesting guy. You want to take uh, Verwayne? Uh, is it the one with the top, uh, the top uh, one. a bunch of, well, a bunch of them just popped up just as I came over here. Um, this is the episode 26, Just Cleared Inspection? No, you can throw that one out. And there's another one at the top of the, that just came in. So Five minutes until the show is live. No, you did that one. I did that uh, there's one. There's a bunch here you did. Willis Croft, good evening from Joe Conjol. Did you read that one? Yeah. Looking, All right. The other uh, one is, Verwang says, about twice a month, I will post a link to my appearances on the show on my Facebook page. I don't know how many go listen, but those posts always get traction. All right. There I see you it go. now. Yeah, you caught me over looking up who, what the, all the best sellers were. I wasn't looking right at Twitter. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, now, uh, speaking of the archive, as, as Verwayne just mentioned that, and I mentioned it uh, for uh, Caleb Pirtle's, uh episode from last week, uh, here's how you can find these archives because we're all over the place, uh, and we're looking for more places to put it, too. So there you go. Mm. If you miss a show, find us in the archive in the Fresh Ink Group channel on YouTube, on Spotify, or under the podcast tab at freshinkgroup.com, beamweeks.com, and stephengs.com. On YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll our first commercial for a thriller before we uh, introduce this week's guest. And then once we start talking, we'll probably get to some phone calls pretty quick. So we got people, three if, you, of them lined up. if you're waiting, so, we'll get to you in a minute. If yeah. you haven't called in yet, go ahead and call now. All right. North Korea will be the biggest challenge to your presidency, warned the outgoing commander-in-chief. But to imprison journalist John Jason... Surviving each day in the prison camp proves the greatest challenge of his life. Protecting beautiful young prisoner Jisoo has also grown increasingly difficult for this slight man, otherwise powerless, but for his prowess at deceiving their captors. Navy SEAL Andrew Gunner Jackson is tasked by the President himself with gathering intel from the Hermit Kingdom. It's a dangerous gamble where capture means summary execution. If he's lucky, or death, the slow way, in a North Korean prison re-education camp. Information is the least of his concerns. Though, as the president agrees, he can leverage this mission to satisfy a few goals of his own. How far will each man go to fend off the cruel machinations of a ruthless dictator? And will that be enough for either to survive? Operation Counterpunch is ready to read now. Proudly published in hardcover, paperback, and all ebook formats by Fresh Ink Group. By Mark Marlowe. Operation Counterpunch. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this week's, this week's guest is Texas author Patrick Parker. Patrick earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Management and a Master of Arts in International Relations. He is a retired U.S. Army artillery officer who saw duty in the United States, Southeast Asia, Europe, and Panama. Of his many assignments, his most memorable is the five years in Italy and one year in Germany. 
After retiring from the military, Parker spent an additional 15 years working in the defense industry. He's completed numerous military courses, including Command and General Staff College, the Senior Officer's Nuclear Accident Course. Nuclear Accident, that's a fun concept, isn't it? The Nuclear (laughs) Chemical and Biological Course, Nuclear Chemical Target Analyst Course, and 8-Inch Atomic Projectile Assembly Course. This sounds like the kind of guy you want to party with. Now retired again, Parker enjoys writing, astronomy, working in the garden, and traveling. He lives in Texas. Welcome to the show, Parker. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so for you, having me, you, Dean, Stephen. You're living in Texas now. Where are you originally from, and where all have you lived? Oh, <laughs> the, the list is long. Now, I, I originally grew up in Oklahoma, and uh, when I went in the military, uh, obviously, you go away. I lived in uh, Fort Sill a couple of times. I uh, lived in Nacogdoches, Texas. I lived in Nacogdoches. Um, Nacogdoches, that's over in East Texas. Beautiful, really. It's in the Piney Woods. Um, then I went to Italy, lived over there five years, uh, Hanau for a year, um, and, and just all over the place. When we first retired, we thought, well, let's go back to Oklahoma. <clears throat> that wasn't home. My daughter was living in Texas. She said, Dad, come down here. And make a long story short, we did. And loved it ever since. Cool. Fantastic. Well, Beam, instead of risking stepping on people's questions, you want to bring in some callers? We can do that. We've got yeah. four of them lined up. So here's here's list some callers. Here's what I'm going to do when I click on you, since there's no way that you're going to know which one I'm talking to. I'm going to I'm going to read your area code uh, as I take the call. So that means the first caller up is area code eight three zero. Uh, welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, area code 830. Ooh, the Hello. suspense is killing me. Area code 830. 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 830- 708. Going once? Going twice? 708 is Cook All County. Right. I will go ahead. No, 708 is the it's 830708. I oh. was trying to give a little more of the number. Okay, let's try this next one here. This next one is going to be area code 562. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> Hello? Hello, area code 562. Oh, we've never Hello. had this happen before. That's the California code, Los Angeles County, portions right. of Orange County. Southern Orange California, what? you out there? Hello, caller. Hello. All right. Oh, this has been fun. This is exciting. Yeah. All right, let's do this one. This one is area code 646. How about it? Are you out there, area code 646? It's me, Dr. Helen. All Hello, right. Dr. Hi, Helen. Helen. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm still re- recuperating at Riverside Rehab. How you feeling? How you I'm feeling? I'm not rehabbed yet. I'm mostly bedridden. But I'm I'm at, with you guys to uh, support the uh, all the writers and your publishing company. All right. Cool. I'm having a little trouble talking because that's part of the disability. Yeah. Do you Do you have a question? So, uh, how are you guys doing? We're doing well. well. Great. Do you have a a question for Patrick? Huh? Helen, do you have a a question question for today's guest? Patrick, I I didn't hear some introductory stuff. I just got on about three minutes ago. Okay, Uh, our guest is Patrick. Give me uh, a hint. Patrick Parker. He's a writer. Do you have a question? Yes, I know. What I'm interested in with all writers is um, what. What made you develop your techniques or your interests or your as you became more experienced as a writer? What uh, what part of writing, in other words, do you favor? Do you enjoy? Did you develop yourself? Well, let me kind of answer it this way. Um, I write fast-paced, suspense. Fiction. That's what I read, what I grew up reading, you know, like Tom Clancy, Tom Clancy Robert Ludlum, and all those guys. Oh. They were the four of them. And I, I, I 
read those, you know, kind of going on. I read now uh, David Balducci, uh, John Grisham is a good guy, Daniel Silva. Mm-hmm. There's a whole bunch of good guys out there. I, I wouldn't say there's any one better than others. They're just all great writers. And I read their work. But what I like to do <clears throat> is tell a story and try to get the reader, put them in the story, and when they walk away, I want them to say, what is real and what's fiction in this? And that, that's, that's what I try to do. And my job is just really to entertain you for as long as we're together. So I don't know if I that answers like your question. I also like what you said about fast-paced. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it, you're not going to... You're not going to fall asleep. You're going to be on the edge of your seat on my books all the way through. Yeah, and you're not going to put the book down so quickly, right? Yeah. No. You're right. going to want to read it right. all through. That sounds that sounds very good. I like that. Yeah. And Dr. Helen, uh, over on Twitter, Verwayne Greenhoe posted, I'm glad to hear your voice tonight, at Burrell Med Writer. Thank you, uh, Greenhoe and everybody. But remember, I'm still sick. I'm yeah. not walking yet. Well, we're all rooting have all for you, Dr. Manner- they also teach you how to eat. <laughs> yeah. You have to chew. You have to. There's a swallow person, and it's not a bird. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank, well thank, thank, thank you, Helen. Thank, 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 yeah. you, thank you for calling in, Helen. We're gonna we're gonna jump to the next call. But I'm Please. interested in the whole party, so I'm listening. Right. Okay. Th- thanks okay. for calling. Glad you're here. Enjoy Thanks. the soiree, <laughs> the fig soiree. There you go. Bye. All right. Yeah, we're serving watermelon here at the fig party. Okay, we're going to go to this next one. This one is going to be area code 214. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Patrick. This is Caleb Pertle. I just figured Hi, we Texas boys could better stick together. <laughs> All right. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good to have you back on again. Well, and I tell you what, well, one of the great things in life is I've discovered you all on a Wednesday night. And cool. that just makes Wednesday night uh, worth waiting for. Well, fantastic. Wow, we appreciate Spread that. The word. <laughs> <laughs> and and you said we're going to have him on, what, every other week from now on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I was wondering about Patrick because he does write real thrillers. I mean, you talk about uh, holding your breath and trying to figure out how long you can hold it uh, before the next shot comes. Patrick, what do you spend the yeah. most time on, working on plot or character? Ooh. Well, that's a real good question. It's uh, I, I don't know if I could say I spend more time on one thing or the other. I try to get the details right. Um and so I, I can spend a couple of days just working on what are the, the surroundings, the details, what are we trying to do here, and then make the character come in. Uh, I, I guess I don't really focus more on one than the other. It's like somebody asked me one time, well, do you fly by the seat of your pants? You fly everything out. I write the story. Uh, actually, the characters write the story. So... You know, I, I have in mind what I want the character to be like and what I wanted to do. Uh, I also start out with how I want the story to end when I start writing it. So then I got to sit down and figure out, well, I got to work backwards. Well, what does he got to do to get there? So it all goes together. And, you know, I can't have the, the character not fit the story. And I can't have the story not fit the character, if that makes sense to you. And so, and does, both does wind up question? being tweaked in order to fit each other, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. I've well, never I known anybody to have it right. Because yeah. readers will accept your characters. Readers will accept your plot. If you make one mistake in the details, they'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're exactly right. That's right. And – in my writer's group, I hear, I don't know, a month ago, I was writing along, and one of the or guys in the writer's group, he said, you forgot to get out of the head of this character getting this one. And I looked at what he wrote, and I said, yep, you're right. So mm. <laughs> that can happen. Um, it can happen. And I, I was, I'm working on 
my new story, and I've been on the phone for the last, I don't know, a couple of days for details. It's just details. And I, I told the person that, that's um, working with me on this, uh, he's, he's an expert guy, and I said, I want to be able that any other expert come along and say, you know exactly what you're talking about. This is true stuff. <clears throat> I've done that with every one of my stories to make sure down to whatever gun they use, probably the one they would really use, uh, you know, those kind of things. And, and where is it? Is it plausible? Yeah, that's what I try to do. Hmm. Well, when it's all said and done, that touch of authenticity is what makes the difference between a good book and a great book. Hey, Pat, yep. you're good to talk to you. Have a great show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, tell me what all, what all of you think of this distinction. When I've been asked this question before and I've kind of thought about it, to me the difference was when I'm working on plot, I'm booting up the computer and I'm working. When I'm working on character, I'm at the grocery store. You know, I'm driving down Look the road. I'm, I'm thinking about characters. I'm observing people. I'm thinking, you know, my, my character could act like that or this or that or whatever. So I'm finding I really don't write down. Some people, you know, create whole logs of character traits, things like that. I don't write yeah, my character do stuff down. Uh, the things I write down are when I'm outlining the plot. So I think I yeah. spend as much or more time on character, but it's not work time. It's think time. It's kind of a yeah. different kind of work. Is that, do you think? But it, it, but it, 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 yeah. You, you think it you guys together. have some of that distinction, too? Yeah, the, the, the thing is, you never run out of characters. Never. You always <laughs> are looking at characters. <laughs> yeah. you know, like I if you think so yeah. many late if nights in Air Force. Characters just go to the store, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I live in Alabama. If you're looking for a character, I'll take you to Walmart. <laughs> exactly. I think you're going to find a lot of those characters in Walmart yeah. USA. What I see at Walmart yeah. is just wow. <laughs> you know, this this brings something to mind for me. Uh, here, I don't know, a few months ago, I had someone to say, you know, these characters you're talking about, uh, politicians and senators, and, and you're making them kind of sound like oh, cartoonish characters. And I stopped for a minute, and I said, have you looked at the TV lately? Look at the news? And he laughed. He said, oh, no, oh. right. So, you know, <clears throat> that's, I just see people. Hey, if this, people, this, this person is doing this, and he has got this job, and he fits, right? He's in my store. Huh. So, All right. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for calling in, Caleb. We appreciate that. Hey. Hey, we'll, we'll keep Thank looking, you, and uh, you're good to see you, Pat. We'll talk to you later. Okay, you too. Great. Take care. Thanks, everybody. You bet. Bye bye. All right. We well, do uh, have a yeah. couple of things on Twitter here. Joe Connell okay. says, "If you missed it, and want to learn about my Detective PI series? Listen to my interview on Voice of Indie podcast, Woo-hoo. episode ninety-one. Click here." And I say that's that's. That's putting up instead of shutting up. And then Mar- Marlena Smith Burris, uh, Burris, I'm sorry, <laughs> let's say that again. Marlena Smith Burris, she's uh, promoting the podcast, saying it's live chat with uh, author Patrick Parker and our awesome hosts at B Weeks and Stephen G's. See, we are both awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Marlena. Nice call. Okay. Um, let's see here. We are going to go to, uh, which one is it? 708. Yeah. Um, area code 708. Uh, 793. That's Cook That's County. Savona. No, no. It's, it, it's 708. It's Cook County? Uh, if it's the area code 708. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Area uh, 708, you are on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. Chicago, Chicago area. Chicago area. Going once. Oh, and this is the second 708 that uh, doesn't want to answer. Hmm. So, all right. We'll just hang well, we, that one up. We appreciate you trying and hope you hope you try again. I tend to think this they call in and they're waiting to, to and then they go wander off and do something and <laughs> they're not catching it. Yeah, all right, we're going to go down to uh, uh, area code 818. Uh, welcome to the show. You are on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Now, this is Robert Williscroft, and I'm calling from Centennial, Colorado. All right. All right. 
Dr. Welcome Willis to show, Trout, Robert. welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello, Robert. Hey, uh, Patrick. Uh, yes. One of the things that I, I'm, I'm an author, I'm one of the uh, uh, Fresh Ink Group authors. Uh, one of the genres oh, I write in is um, <clears throat> submarine tech with thrillers. And uh, it uh-huh. looks to me like you and I kind of have some overlaps in what we write about. And I've got, a, I've got a question to you about how you conduct your research and what you do to ensure that uh, your uh, readers don't come to you and say, hey, buddy, you got that wrong. <laughs> That's always my fear. That's always my fear. <laughs> um, I, I guess the first thing, I want to write about things I know about, one. Uh, two, like in, in, here, here's an example. Uh, my next uh, book, uh, that I'm working on. Uh, I have some F-16 aircraft in there, and I have a I have a neighbor, a friend, who is an F-16 pilot. <clears throat> so I went to him and asked him, and I said, I need to know nothing classified, just what's real and what's not. <clears throat> so I do that, um, and there's other people around. You know, if I need some specific police information, I go find a policeman. And ask him, you know, if they don't arrest me, I'll, you know, maybe I can get my my question asked. Uh, but it's it's I, I try to go to the expert or uh, go to find out the real source, whether it be cramp or whatever, and, and make sure it's a, a real authoritarian. Uh, and I want to double check it. You know, I just don't want to go on the on the internet and say, oh yeah, it's blue, and then come to find out, you know. A lot of times the internet might not be correct. I'm going to go verify it. Does that answer your question? Hmm. In part, yeah. And I, I've got a uh, sort of a related question. What what time? I haven't read your stories yet. Although I intend to, after listening to you, I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, one of your readers. But, uh, oh, what great. What is the time frame that you write in? Um, my first book. My my first. Well, I, I'd say present day, but the first book. Uh, was set in 1993. Uh, that was Treasures of the Fourth Reich. My second one was War Merchant, which was set in 1995. Six Minutes Early, which is my third, uh, was uh, 2016, uh, or, or present day. And then the one I just finished is uh, its really a follow-on to Six Minutes Early, and it's at the end of 2016. So pretty much... Uh, present day. And yeah, always well, date. Actually, uh, <laughs> you're kind of like me. Present day is actually in a 2022, and and you're writing back in the 1990s, and I appreciate that that seems like present day. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in the last chapter of my latest uh, Mac McDowell mission, and um, yes. this this takes place in the, uh, the, the this part of the book takes place in 1989, and I'm dealing with um, some uh, uh, DPRK North Korean vessels and some Chicom vessels from ships yes. from that period. It's yes. interesting yep. how much information is out there and how much information is not available, uh, so that so that the the backdrop the canvas of the story is completely real. You find the same thing? Yes. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you, and I've been able to find and research uh, either through my contacts or just on the on the internet, uh, going to some of my sources. You can find out what you need. For example, uh, during that period, you can find out what missiles they were using, um, what kind of aircraft they were flying, things like that. You can find that. And then sometimes you have to be careful. Well, you want to stay away from mod one or mod two, uh, but yeah, it can be a challenge. It, it really can. You know, there's always uh, military.com has got some some uh, good information, uh, and then you know, just networking, you can find out, and then you can verify what, what your contacts say. But yeah, I think Patrick, just just imagine trying to do this without the internet. Uh, <laughs> be tough. It would be tough. Yeah. a lot of time at the library. Hmm. I appreciate talking with you. Uh, you know, I don't want to monopolize this. It's been a pleasure talking with you, and I look forward to reading your books. Well, no. thank you, Robert. Anytime. Hey, just, you know, uh, 
you know, and the first thing I want to say is a lot of people probably want to know why I don't con- connect with them on like Twitter and some of these other places. They won't let me connect anymore. So I apologize for that. But hey, if we could get together, if you need some information, uh, send me an email or whatever. And uh, I'll help you any way I can. Cool. That's that's what we're about, making connections. Yeah, now, absolutely. Now, Ro- Robert, before you go, if you'll stick around for a minute, we're about to play the world premiere of a new commercial for a book we're about to publish, and you've not heard this commercial yet because we just made it. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. There Roll it, it Bean. Right. Here we go. Submariner, 30 years of hijinks and keeping the fleet afloat. Jerry Pate's semi-autobiographical collection of 60 stories recounts his 30 years in and around the U.S. Navy submarine fleet, ranging from light-hearted to wrenching. All are poignant inside looks at naval operations rarely seen by outsiders. Topics include the real story behind the shuttle Challenger tragedy, risking his own life underwater, discovering a Soviet spy living across the street, surviving when an engine ignites, critical missions, and the everyday lives of men and women of the fleet. Compiled by author Robert G. Williscroft and proudly published by Fresh Ink Group, Submariner is available worldwide in hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. Dive into Submariner for hijinks and breathtaking adventure with this poignant memoir by a true American hero. Ooh, well, now, that's book. really nice. Well, thank you know, you. Jerry is listening. Yeah. I'm hoping that Jerry is listening to this podcast. I hope so. I hope so, but, too. But we will have Jerry and Dr. Willis Croft joining him on in, uh, what is it, two, three weeks, Beam? Uh, like the 24th, August 24th. Yeah. yeah, mark your calendars, people. We're going to be talking about things underwater on the 24th. Yeah. And above water, too. <laughs> But uh, we're still working on the video for that. We're learning some new editing techniques. We're trying to do some things where we kind of yeah. make, make the picture roll away in waves and stuff. And it's, we're two days trying into to learning go next now. Level. Yeah, it, we we do that with our videos. We keep challenging ourselves, and uh, we think this one's going to be pretty cool. So people, look for that video by the end of the week, anyway. All right. So thanks well, for thank calling you. in, Dr. Willis Cross. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Yep. We'll see you on the show. Now, right, over on uh, Twitter, we do have a we yeah. do have a couple of comments real quick. Yeah, you want to read Marlena? Uh, sure. Let me get over there. Well, I will then. She says, "People watching and research two of my favorite things." And then, uh, <laughs> oh. yeah, and then you got Joe question Congel. Joe Congel? Yeah, Joe Congel says, "Hi, Patrick. Do you already know ahead of Hi, time Joe. how many? Uh, do you know already know ahead of time how many books you will write in total?" for your Max Kenworth series, or will you continue until it doesn't feel right any longer? Uh, no, I don't have any idea. Uh, I do like, I do like what they're doing. Um, and I've got, I, I just finished one called Broken Arrow, Acts of Treason. That's Max Kenworth. I think I told Joe that once before. And then I'm about halfway through uh, another one. Uh, that's a sequel to that one uh, where they go on. So at least you'll see two more come out, maybe a third. I don't know. Um, We we just have to see. Uh, Probably the answer is when it doesn't feel right anymore, I guess. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And and then the second part of that is, and then when they offer the big contract with the six-figure advance, it starts feeling better. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. new idea. Right. Yeah, I, I once decided what, what I was I never going to write a sequel, but I, but one of my books got an offer for a sequel, and there was and there was a little bit of money attached to it, and it was like, okay, I hey. wrote a sequel. <laughs> I'll sure get that line, that's for sure. Yeah. So uh, thanks for writing in, Joe. We appreciate your support on Twitter and uh, everywhere else. Thank yeah. you, Joe. <clears throat> so we did, we we wrapped on the calls for now. Uh, we actually have another one that popped up. No, right. I have a theory, I have a theory about the other calls. I think people are calling in to listen to the show and not necessarily to talk. And if that's the case, hmm. find the link, 
click on the link and listen to the to the show through the website. Uh, it's easier to do, and that way, you know, we're not hello, hello, hello. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna go to the phone line again, and this one is gonna be area code three two one. Area code three two one. Welcome to the show. You are on the air. What is your name and where are you calling from? Good evening. My name is Jerry Pate, and I'm hey, from Jerry. Florida. Show it, Jerry. All right. All right. Glad to meet you. We've been working on your yep. stuff for so long. It's nice to hear a voice. Yeah. Yep. I uh, don't want to step on Patrick Parker's uh, time, but uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I heard your commercial about the book that I have written, and uh, when it talked about the engine igniting, that was a uh, a um, rocket engine igniting up at Cape Canaveral. So, <laughs> so it, it was one of the big all, ones. Yeah, with all the boosters. It was a Delta. And um, it's in my book, and uh, I realized immediately I was way too close. So, <laughs> what but was I the didn't hint? run. I stayed, stood my post. So, and I look forward to talking to you guys and folks that have questions. Um, my particular book um, is totally from memory from my time in the service. So, I'm, even though I'm 76, I'm blessed to have uh, excellent long term memory and recall and, and, um, that's all I wanted to say. Well, thanks for calling in. Now, if you're interested in thrillers, this week's guest, Patrick Parker, has got, right. got three good ones out there and a fourth one on the way. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I have very, it's going to sound strange, I have very little reading comprehension. Huh. Um, and that's all covered in the last chapter of my book. But yeah. we'll go into that in more detail um, when Dr. Bob, as I call him, and I come back on the air uh, around the 24th. All right. So I wish you well, Parker. And uh, Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. And uh, I wish I had more information to write more books, but uh, I think this one is uh, going to be it for me. Hmm. So, well, it's a good one, and it, it is going to be in pre-sale probably within about a week or so here, people. So if you like yeah. these kinds of stories, I mean, it's U.S. Naval history. He's got 60 yeah. chapters, 60 chapters with photos. So this is a yeah. big, thick, comprehensive book full of stories. And uh, if you remember that Geico commercial where they asked the guy, who reads books about submarines? And he says, my dad. Well, it ought to be all of us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it covers more than submarines. So. Yes, quite a bit more. All right. Well, thanks right, for then. calling in, Jerry. Right. We look forward to talking you to bet. you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So, so are we wrapping oh, up the call uh, actually, for a moment? Yeah, we got, we got a couple more calls. So, All right. Uh, let's try this uh, 830, area code 830. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Vivian. I'm calling from uh, Kingsbury, Texas. Well, welcome to the show, Vivian. Hey, Vivian. Hey there, Mr. Parker. Hi, Vivian. I want to know, I want to know how you choose all these women that you kill off. I just hate these action books where you kill off women. It drives me crazy. And you, you've been waiting a while to tell an author that, too, haven't you? Well, Actually, I think well, I've known him once before. I met him before. All right. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, how do I choose the women? Uh, you know, that, that's interesting. I take them from my background, believe it or not. It's, it's women that I knew uh Professionally, of course, and they oh, were minute, either. Wait a, minute, wait a minute, Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker, I have read some of your work, and those were not professional encounters that I read about. Those were more intimate. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and then you go in the no. room. Uh, oh, here I know who you're talking about. You're talking about Maureen. Maureen, uh, Bart's girlfriend. No, I'm not. Well, I'm talking about. I'm talking about Scarlett. Oh, well, Scarlett didn't get killed, if you'll remember. She didn't get killed. She almost did. I know, did. but you kept trying to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. No, I, I had a lot of respect. I had a lot of respect for her. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and these women, you know, you take traits from one person, uh, another, put them together, and that's how you roll them out to be a real person. Like uh, uh, Scarlett, for example. You know, I knew she was bits and pieces of some other people I knew. Um, and then there was probably a little made up. And I understand, you know, she, she was working undercover military intelligence. So she had to do that. Um, and she was very cunning. She was very brave. And uh, uh, she almost got in trouble. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's fun to make up these characters and, and put them together and let the let the reader come up with their own idea about them. And like you, you know, she says, oh, I don't want you to kill this person. Or why are you so mean to this person? You, that that character had an impact on you, which I think is a good thing. You remember that character. Um, so, how do I come up with I them? Remember that you, I remember I remember that you hate women, Pat Parker. Uh, no, I do not. All. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. I'm just thinking. <laughs> no. Well, other, like other than that, Vivian, do you enjoy the stories? <laughs> His stories are so well written. I, yeah. I'm just um, can't believe how well I know. I know somebody who writes so well. Um, I've had many friends write books and publish them over the years, and Pat and uh, one other person are like, well, several people I know now are writing really, really good books, and Pat is very good. That's a good endorsement. Thank you, Vivian. I appreciate yeah, that. I really do. I really do. I, you know, and, and you know, you've heard me, you've heard me say this a, a dozen times or so. You know, I want the reader to go away being entertained and, and held their attention, but to walk away and say, what was real in this and what was fake or what was fiction? And, and so far, it's been good. So, yeah. Hmm. Now, Vivian, both of your co-hosts are also novelists, and I think we've found that uh, you know when we're organizing our stories, putting together outlines or whatever your method is, sometimes you just have to put that red shirt tra- Star Trek guy in there because exactly. you need somebody to die, and that's why that exactly. character was only there in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know that's why he's there if it's Star Trek, but in a novel, a good novel, you're not supposed to see it coming. Yeah, in a good novel, you're gonna you're gonna make that character something that the the reader is is drawn to, or or it's you know it's a sympathetic yeah. character, and then you whack them, and there you go. Yeah, I've had times yeah. when I've created a character knowing that I have to kill that character 27 chapters in, and when I get to chapter 27, it still breaks my heart, even yeah. though it's a fiction, fictional character because I've come to know <laughs> the person. You know, uh, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I did that. Uh, and Vivian, you'll remember this is where Bart uh, kills Maureen in that uh, vacant building. Uh, I think that surprised everybody. You, you're yeah. right. Sometimes you just have to. Well, thanks for calling well, in, Vivian. Okay. That was, that was a was a good I, good challenge. Next, it's Pat- going, so I'll listen next week. Patrick Parker, author, woman. Yeah, hey. listen next week. <laughs> next week. No, he's, he's not a woman here. <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. Appreciate oh, it. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for calling, Vivian. We hope we hope to, we hope you call in in future episodes, uh, not just Texas authors, but uh, yeah. everybody. Uh, we appreciate the call. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm really not, All right. I'm really not a woman. Anymore. Yeah, we we are not endorsing the the notion that Patrick. <laughs> Parker hates yeah. women. <laughs> we're not, not endorsing, endorsing that, no. <laughs> In fact, right, we're we making gotta, excuses for why we have to kill them off sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. It's, that's the nature of the business. All right, yeah. we got another call, yeah. so uh, let's go ahead and hit this. 
And this is going to be area code 512. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is James, and I'm calling from New Braunfels, Texas. All right. Welcome to the show, James. Hey, James. Hi, James. How are you? Hey, Pat. Good, good. Uh, yeah. Full disclosure, I know Pat. He's a good friend of mine and a, right. and a, a writing buddy, and I've, I've always <laughs> wanted to ask him if there was something in his his own history and his military service that he's always wanted to write about or something that he has told himself he's never going to write about. Oh, uh, good question. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I don't really have to study about that. I'm kind of pretty open. And, um, you know, I, it's just me. Um, you, you know, I, I, you heard, you've heard me talk about my time in Italy and Germany and in, in the States and kind of put all that together and some of my background, what I've worked on. So I, I really can't think of anything, uh, you know, not like Vivian said, I don't hate women because I, you know, I like women. <laughs> I, I'm even married. <laughs> Uh, no, I, uh, I think, I'm sorry. No, we we know Vivian. Vivian's a character. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, that I, I can't. I don't know of anything that I wouldn't write about or that I haven't. Well, about. well, that's let me let me ask a question. Is there something you would like to write about that you can't because of like? It's top secret national security type of thing. Yeah, and, and give us the details. Uh, well, in my stories, I have come really close, really close to classified stuff, but I stay away from it because that causes all kinds of other problems. Uh, again, it's and I want to do it with such realism. Uh, you'll 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 wonder again. Um, where we're at in this is this real? Uh, and, and in my uh, the book I'm working on now, uh, in about the next chapter, you guys are anybody that reads that chapter in advance is going to say, "Whoa, this, this must be classified," but it's not. Um, so, you know, it's um, almost anything is fair game if you figure out how to write about it. Uh, and remember, you don't have to say every little detail. You can let the reader fill in the blanks, and I think that's what's more fun for a reader. You know, hmm. as, as long as you get them up there to that point. Okay, you never did tell me what color his hair was. I think the guy's hair is brown with curl. Okay, that's okay. But I never said that. Uh, does that does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Uh, kinda. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I would. I, I like to write about what I know. So something I don't know about, and if I'm not interested in it enough to go find out, I wouldn't write about. It. Hmm. Okay. So that's, kind of, that's kind of where I come from. So James, you you've read Patrick's books, I take it. Yeah, uh, I've read. I've uh, actually read all of his books. Um, and <laughs> I'm in the room with the uh, with the new ones, so it's uh, it's it's nice to see his process and you yeah. know uh, being in a group with him is great too because he he really has such a, a different style than me, and I know that that helps and that pushes me. And he's he is such a a workhorse when it comes to his process and his character and like his plots are Dickensian. Uh, there's there's multiple plot lines going on. He's got you know you need a roster to keep his his character straight, or at least I do because I'm terrible <laughs> at that. Uh, so it's awesome to to watch his stuff come together. And um, and then at the end, you know, I've, I've read uh, Treasures of the Fourth Reich and uh, and Six Minutes Early after their their completion. And uh, you know, you can just see the the polish. I mean, he brings stuff to to our group that's already so polished. And then you go back and read like the finished finished product. And it's it's really really just clean. And I mean, he he's a breath away from from Kussler or Baldacci or, or any of these people that are published. And and again, you know, just reading him, he's the real deal. And you know, he's yeah, that's just it. If he writes something, it's it's probably really close to how it would happen. And uh, and I think uh, 
there are some places where you can see the details where uh, you really think that that's, that's something he's pulling from real life. So that's why I wanted to ask him that question. Mm, that's an excellent endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. That's, you know, and, that. there's, and, and that's just, you know, listeners that are readers. There are some excellent indie authors who are out there that may not have the big, you know, companies behind them, but they're still just as fantastic authors in this, at this level as there are up in the big houses. So keep that in mind. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There's every, every time I turn around, there's this great author, you know, they're, they're mm. good, good authors. And there's yep. some that are good and they're going to great. They're, and they're just progressing. And you can see how they're getting better and better with each thing they write. So uh, yeah, I agree with that. Good. Well, with all of those endorsements from James and uh, and Patrick Parker's reputation as being having deep respect for women, he sounds like a hell of a guy. <laughs> uh, Thanks for calling in, yeah. James. Oh, that was and, a hey, have a great time, guys. Yeah. Thanks, James. Thanks a lot, James. And, and you know, to, to to further along, I do have two wonderful daughters too. So see, I'm all surrounded right. by women. All right, there you go. All right. We do have uh, a bunch of stuff over here on Twitter. Uh, well, I, you start because I'm I was looking at uh, area code okay. here. Go ahead. So uh, Marlena Smith Burris, she says, "Oh my word, the last caller! Shout out to her for the great laughs." <laughs> She's talking about Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Robert Willis-Croft, who uh, called in earlier. He says, uh, Fresh Ink Group, I have a couple of characters that I build up as sympathetic persons who turn out to be underhanded bastards that I have to kill <laughs> off. Yeah, I've done that a few times, too. Yeah. And then he adds, when you get close to the classified stuff, a good disclaimer will save your butt. Uh, that's true, too. And, and you know, I've, I've long read that if you really are talking about true stuff and you want to throw them off the scent, put one thing in there that's wrong that people wouldn't want to associate it with it. Like if like a woman breaks up with her boyfriend and she wants to write the book and base the character on him and make him look really bad, give him a, you know, a small manhood and he's not going to step up and say, wait, she's writing about me. Right. (laughs) (laughs) They they would never face that to no, no, never. Okay. You yeah. want to take Joe, Joe Conjol here? Yeah, Joe Conjol says, wow, Vivian broke Patrick down like she was cross-examining a witness on the stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marlena Smith Burris adds, I, like char- I like to focus on characters tonight. Marlena Smith Burris adds, I used to think as a writer, you had to be really detailed. And although it's important to paint a picture for the reader, it's also good to allow their own imagination to come into play. That is very yes. true. Yes, I, yeah. I, you know, I tend to yeah. give sketch, sketch, uh, sketching, uh, sketch description, so to speak, of my characters. I don't have to, well, you know, tell you, well, they were six foot three and two thirds of an inch, and you know, get, no, get that detail. But I, you know, I throw in hair color, eye color, and yeah, maybe and when you're in, the, when you're in that mole on her cheek. When you're in that character's point of view, he's not supposed to be observing his own height and hair color and stuff exactly. anyway. Exactly. You're supposed exactly. to be talking right. about what right. he's perceiving. Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's what I was meaning when I said, you know, write it in a way that and you want to let the reader fill in some of those blanks. Uh, that's what's fun as a reader. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, any callers waiting, Beam? Uh, nope, we are done with the callers, other than there's a, still a couple from earlier, uh, but uh, no, like maybe they're on as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, if if for some reason somebody wants to listen to the show and can't come up with the link or any other way to do it and you want to call in, uh, you know, that's okay. If we click over and say, are you there, caller? Just say, hey, I'm just listening. And we'll click away. We'll let you just yeah. keep listening. So it doesn't have to be a big deal. If that's if that's the best way you can find us, we'll take you any way you can get here. Yeah. But uh, right now we're we're caught up on the calls. We're caught up on the call. All right. Well, why don't we uh, roll another commercial here? This will be Water Lilies Over My Grave, which is another book that's going into pre-sale any day now. The final proofs just came in. The covers are done. We're just uh, dotting the last I and hope to have this thing out. All right. Psychologist Annabelle O'Brien flees from her psychotic ex-husband in New York City, only to find he is stalking her across the country with deadly intentions. 
She takes a job in the resort town of Lake Najee. When a series of attacks place her in even greater danger, Annabelle turns to hostile burnout of a detective, Mark Driscoll, who is assigned to protect her. Then, two women who resemble her are murdered, and the town is gripped with fear. Mark and Annabelle must work together to catch the killer before he catches them. From the celebrated author of such bestsellers as Legacy of Danger and her collection, Eerie Charms of the Short Story, Water Lilies Over My Grave is a novel of psychological suspense about one woman searching for a new life, even as she is threatened by her old one. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group, Water Lilies Over My Grave is available in all print and digital formats worldwide. Now, the video right. for that is quite cool. It's over in the Fresh Ink Group channel on YouTube. Check it out, like it, share it, and uh, you know, make us happy. Subscribe while you're there. Yeah, and that's an excellent book as well. So uh, get over there and pre-order it when it's available yep. to be pre-ordered. Now, Patrick, um, we're we're at the one hour one hour mark here and going into overtime. Um, why don't we talk okay. about your books? Let's uh, yeah. let's okay. yeah. take them one at yeah. a time and you know. You know, a couple of minutes on each. Tell us what they're about and whatever. Uh, you want to pick which one to go first? I'll just start with the very first one I wrote, Treasures of the Fourth Reich. Um, and it's, like I said earlier, it's set in 1993. Obviously, it's after World War II, but many of the people, uh, well, just, I know our age, but a lot of people still don't know. But the, the during World War II, the Nazis stole all the treasures throughout every country they occupied, and they're still finding them, turn it up. Uh, uh-huh. So my female protagonist, Maria Connor, she is from Panama, but she married uh, a retired army guy, and they're living in Italy. And she, she's an art expert, so she wants to write this coffee table book. When she does her research, on the art, she wants to have a section of the World War II stolen art. And, you know, in Italy, that's kind of the center of the art world. Mm. And uh, she goes to the museums. She meets people that were involved in the art restitution uh, during World War II. And uh, she really did it. And she starts discovering some of these lost or stolen pieces. And uh, the story goes on. And she becomes involved. She finds the journal that SS Major Fabian kept of all the stolen loot, or the, the loot that he stole at the end of World War II, and he stashed it away for the Fourth Reich. He was in charge of doing the hideouts of the treasures to fund the Fourth Reich. She finds it, and then she gets taken prisoner. Uh, they got to get her back, and then. Uh, it kind of culminates down to the end where they find out that President Boris Yeltsin is getting ready to turn over some documents to this big convention that's going to expose uh, this big conspiracy that was dealing in this stolen art. And uh, it's a big fight to the end. So it's about treasures. It's about corruption. It's about uh, high dollars. And it's uh, a lot of it was a lot of fun to write it. I learned quite a bit about art and the missing art, but it was really fun and interesting. And I guess I got really excited about that when I lived in this. So. Yeah, that, that battle over trying to recover lost stolen art and identify its owners and get them to the heirs and challenge whether or not they belong to museums or other owners and stuff is still oh, going yeah. on to this oh, yeah. day after yeah, so many sure. generations. So it's a very, very poignant sure. topic, and it's very fascinating. Yeah. I, I'm definitely looking yeah. forward yeah. to reading that. Yeah. It, 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 I thought it was a good book. Everybody liked the book. It really did. Uh, yeah, cool. Anyway. Uh, so where'd you go after Fourth Treasures Reich. of the Fourth Reich? I wrote War Merchant. And it's, right. about, it's a story about a single mother. Uh, she, long story made short, she finds herself working for this um, black market arms dealer. And his whole job is he wants to create wars. And that's the the reason, the war merchant. And uh, she wants to break free from him, but she can't. He has hold on her by her six-year-old son. He's got him locked away in a school in Switzerland, uh, a very nice fishing school. He's guarded 24 hours a day. And her reward 
for visitation is doing things for him. If she cooperates, she gets to see him. If she doesn't, uh, she, she doesn't get to see him. But she wants to break away. She, starts, she just wants to be a mother. And she learns to kill. Uh, she learns to lie, cheat, steal, just to survive. And uh, so her whole, uh, through the whole story, she's trying to break free from him. And she is on a task. There is a uh, computer expert guy in Austin who's invented this computer device that it's handheld and it can tap into a computer and find all the vulnerabilities and exploit it and access the computer by just being standing close to it. And uh, she's tasked to deliver that to the terrorists and she uses that opportunity when she's going to deliver that to the terrorists to set up her plan, set in an action to break free with her son and escape. Well, it doesn't go as she plans and she finds out that the uh, there's a man from the part of the fence on her trail. There's the terrorists. There's the uh, the guys from the war merchant. So everybody's after her. And it's is she going to make it or not? That's Ooh. what the war merchant's all about. And that Ooh. that story was one. Um, I come up with that idea when I was working as a defense contractor, and uh, it's patterned after a couple of women I know, and uh, they very much like her. And I just did the what if, and uh, that's how it came about. So, now, I like all your covers, but that one really stands out to me. I like that simplistic two-tone, three-tone kind of look and uh, the yeah, silhouette of her holding yeah. the gun. That's uh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's and that's a really a good book, too. I, a lot of people have loved that one. Um, we'll take, because we'll it's have got to, so much realism. Yeah, we'll believe you. So uh, yeah. what about six minutes early? Where, where, where's this Six take? minutes early. Uh, that is set in uh, 2016, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 2016, and it's about this ex special forces major that had to get out of the army. He kind of run out, if you will, and he uh, is living in Panama and working for the FARC, uh, the, the insurgent group in Panama, and. They discovered there's a classified atomic demolition munition storage facility in Panama under the cover of a national uh, NASA research facility. And they wind up stealing, uh, raiding the site, stealing six backpack nukes, if you will. And uh, they're selling, going to sell the nukes to the terrorists. And... The whole thing is he wants to do damage to the United States, Israel, and some other countries. Uh, they they capture all but one, and one makes it into the United States for him to set off his plane. Uh, and it's a, uh, a nuke that would have devastating effect on the heartland. That's what Six Minutes Early is about. And the way I got that title was uh, it's the... The timer is a mechanical timer, much like you see on a wash machine, uh, but it would function as much as six minutes early or mm-hmm. six minutes late, or so many minutes early. And it's and they use the mechanical timer so it's not subject to an EMP pulse or the magnetic or the um, the nuclear battlefield. And I kind of go along and tell you what happened all that, but it's it's uh, man packed nuclear devices. And yes, they do exist. If you need to see pictures or a short video, they're on my website, by the way. So, cool. Uh, Good plug for the website, too. Website. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, another fast pace. It'll keep you on the edge of your seat. And the way he plans this out, uh, Bart Madison, uh, it's going to have a very uh, cascading effect. So uh, that's a good one. And then what well, I did... Uh, not to do a spoiler, but we see Bart come back again in the next book, uh, and I'm kind of tipping it off here. This is your work in progress, off. right? Uh, this is the one I just finished. Not the one I, not the one that's in progress, but uh, the one I just finished, Broken Arrow, Acts of Treason, where Bart Madison does come back. And uh, we thought that uh, he was gone, but he's not. 
And uh, this time, he uh, leads an attack on Insulik Air Base and steals uh, some uh, B-61 nuclear bombs. So uh, that's another fast-paced good one. And Any idea when that will be released? Uh, I'm trying to work on it now. And uh, my wife worked it out two months ago. <laughs> i got to take my time on it. So it, I'm trying to make it happen pretty quick. Yeah. It's, so the correct answer is when it's ready. That's when it will be out. <laughs> and that's, 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 right. that's yeah, usually I'm our answer. Waffling on it. I, I'm <laughs> waffling on it. Uh, and, I'm, and at the same time, there's a sequel to that one. And uh, I'm trying to get it released fairly quickly, you know, within within the year after uh, the uh, the first one, Broken Arrow, Acts of Treason. So I got two of them just lined right. right up there. Now, when those are released, make sure you let us know. We'll uh, make sure we get it in our newsletter and help publicize it other ways okay. too, because we support all indie authors, not just the ones that we uh, that we publish. So we're all we're looking forward to those. Now, Thank listeners, we're gonna we're gonna roll we're gonna roll one more commercial here, and then we got a couple more questions for Patrick uh, on our way out again. This one is for the Daedalus files, which I mentioned earlier in the show is right now really, really banging hard in uh, in bestseller sales on Amazon. So in honor of that, here's the Daedalus files by Robert G. Williscroft. In Daedalus, Navy SEAL Derek Tiger Bailey, irreverent member of the SEAL's Winged Insertion Command, makes a harrowing first base jump in the experimental Griffin 7 hardshell wingsuit from the edge of space. He test flies the armor-plated Griffin 10 in Daedalus LEO, catapulting into space by slingshot and dropping from a record obliterating 160 clicks. Testing the enhanced Griffin 10 MK4 in Daedalus Squad, Bailey's six-man team believes it is fully prepared for hurtling around the world and staging critical re-entry, but challenged to innovate life-or-death solutions with only seconds to spare. It might not survive intact. Then the presidential frontrunner is seized by pirates for ransom in Daedalus combat, and the SWIC team is called to action where it must literally improvise on the fly with everything to lose. Join Tiger Bailey through all four adventures in Sci-Fi Master Robert G. Williscroft's Daedalus series, now collected for the first time as the Daedalus Files, SEAL's Winged Insertion Command, SWIC. All right. That's a that's a cool book. I, every time I I see that book or think about it, I wind up going over to YouTube and watching some of those people try experimenting with wing suits. That's something in my younger days you could have talked me into. In my older days, I'm just happy to wiggle and be excited every time somebody <laughs> says something good about one of my books. <laughs> yeah, that, that does sound like a very interesting book. Yeah, oh, it's very cool, and, and he knows his stuff. So, All right, uh, Patrick Parker, uh, we're down to our last couple of questions here, but callers, there's still time to call in if you want to make a comment, ask a question, 516 453 Nine nine zero two. We could still squeeze some more calls in here, but in the meantime, Patrick, uh, advice. What sort of advice do you have for other authors? Uh, my advice would be write the story. Don't worry about whether it's perfect, uh, whether it's not good enough. Just sit down and start with the first word. Write it. That's one. Two is get in a good writer's group. Um, one that will be honest with you. One that will say, this doesn't make sense to me. Uh, how about this? You know, and our, our group is that way. It's very good. Nobody is, is mean. It's just they want to help everybody else. And I think that's what's the, uh, the key to a good writer's group. And you can see everybody grow. So with those two things, sit down and do it. So, I like that, then, definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, our guest this week has been Patrick Parker. And Patrick, how can people find you? Your website, blog, social media handles, uh, address, uh, what way you walk each day? Uh, how can people find you out there if they want to contact you or learn more about your work? Uh, well, I walk in the mornings 
<laughs> the baby witch will they're always come by and go with you. Yeah, uh, watch I'm on that Twitter. black laser. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on Twitter, uh, Patrick Parker NTX. Uh, I'm on Gab, uh, Patrick Parker NTX. That's November Tango X-Ray. I'm saying is like Pat Parker in Texas. That's what that means. Oh, uh, I've got right. a good reach profile. Um, I've got an Amazon author page. Just go to uh, Patrick Parker, uh, type it in, Patrick Parker Books, either one, take you there, or it's Amazon.com, Patrick-Parker slash E slash Bravo Zero, I think it's O, Bravo O O one J S for Sierra, four O Papa four. I don't know why that's, that's a hard thing to do. But anyway, uh, go to Amazon, Patrick Parker, and you'll find me. It's there. Um, uh, Web page, Patrick Parker Books dot website dot com author. Uh, I think I got them all, didn't I? I said the Amazon web page, my Facebook yep. page. Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash patrick.parker13. And it'll get to me. Uh, very easy to find. I'm all over the place. And as we always... Oh, Instagram. Oh, what do you, what's your handle on Instagram? It's uh, www.instagram.com slash patrickparkerbooks slash... That's another hard one. Patrick, Patrick Parker, Parker Books on Instagram. All right. Yeah. And uh, listeners, as always, when we have a guest on the show and you're trying to track that person down, you want to send a note, ask a question, or just learn more, we have a contact form in all of our websites. All 10 of our websites have them, but uh, freshinkgroup.com is where we recommend you go and use the contact form there. And we'll pass anything along to Patrick that you want to mention. Patrick, it's yeah, been a thrill yeah. having you on. Well, uh, Beam, Stephen, it, it's been my pleasure. Uh, thank you all very much for having me on. I appreciate uh, I appreciate all the people that comment, commented and asked the questions. It, it was a lot of fun. It really was. Yep. And then next week, we're looking forward to having Patricia A. Guthrie as a return visit. Her new book, Water Lilies Over My Grave, is coming out any day now. And after that? After that is author, producer, playwright, J. Ash Looney. Uh, he'll make a return uh, visit. He was on the show uh, way back when we were just getting started. So it would be nice to welcome him back. And after yeah, that, he's, he's putting out a book with 10 plays in it, which you can read like stories or you can use them and actually, you know, put on play productions, fundraisers, things like that. Uh, local community groups. That's an excellent book. The week after that, no surprise, Lieutenant Commander Jerry Pate, who you heard earlier in the show and co guest Robert G. Willis-Croft, who helped him compile the book and, and uh, put all that together. So we're looking forward to having them. Yeah, and uh, soon we will also have uh, Kenneth Lindquist. I mentioned him earlier. His uh, uh, web, website's up. Uh, he's written two how-to-teach driving books, He's one for instructors and one for parents. And uh, it'll be interesting having him on and see what he's about. And after and- that... Well, remember, uh, mention his website again, too, because that thing's just went up. That is how to drive, how to teach yep. driving, how to teach driving.com. Right. And how it's to also teach got, driving. A, got, a, dot com. got an embedded blog in it, too, as well. Yeah, and uh, got, the blog is embedded, so you can go to the website and also catch the blog right there. Yep. Uh, coming soon after that, we're going to have Carlisle Toms releasing The Calling Dream, and we're working on four books for him right now. And after that, Beam? And after that, uh, we will have uh, How to Start and Run a Food Truck Biz in Florida and Georgia author Andrea Wengler. Another yep. return visit. So uh, She's She's launching a series where we're going to cover the, the entire whole, United States with the whole, How to Launch the whole a Food Truck Biz. Yeah, uh, every state has truck. different <laughs> different laws, regulations, licensing procedures, and whatnot. So Andrea worked on this for a long time, decided the best way to do it is to tailor it for every area. So we're looking forward to having her. Again, yeah. we had Patrick Parker on this week. Uh, <laughs> if you missed any of the show, check our archive. Check it out while you're there. See what other shows we've got going. And we're looking forward to seeing all of you again soon. Thanks again, Patrick. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you.
We will see you all next week, everybody. Bye. Bye. You've been a part of Voice of Indy, a production of Fresh Ink Group. Spread the word, support our guests, then find us at freshinkgroup.com and be sure to hashtag Fresh Ink Group.